Welcome back to Broken Electronics. I'm Lee, but before I get much further, I do want to apologize for the background sound that you are sure are hearing. Uh, it is getting to be warmer. I'm trying to delay turning on the AC. Uh, so I've got all the windows open and yeah, that highway ramp and then a highway not that far behind me. Well, if you've been watching my videos, and if you have, believe me, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you probably get the idea that I spend a lot of time on eBay. Some would say probably too much. But anyhow, something caught my eye on eBay. I wasn't looking for it, but it popped up, and I was curious. Now, from the eight that you see on it, you get the idea. But it says System 8. Now, up here it does say Mac OS. But from 7.5 on, Apple branded the operating systems as Mac OS. OS 8, OS 7.5, Mac OS 8, Mac OS 9, Mac OS 10, which is still going. Well, sort of, they changed it back to Mac OS. Anyway, System 8, that's, that's odd. You normally see something like this. Mac OS 8, that's my 8.5 disk. But look, look at something else down lower. See underneath there it says power computing. Power computing was the first authorized Mac clone maker. They licensed the Mac operating system to put on their own hardware. Uh, Apple getting a little desperate to try to maintain market share and keep from closing their doors permanently, decided to try to follow Microsoft's lead and sell their software. So yeah, power computing was the first non-Apple maker of computers that ran the Mac OS. Now, System 8 was originally supposed to be System 7.7, .7, but when Steve Jobs came back, he saw the big mistake that was the clone arrangement. The clone maker's licenses was for System 7. So instead of calling it System 7.7 .7 or Mac OS 7.7, .7, he had it called Mac OS 8. Now, I was a little surprised when I saw this. I had thought that the clone makers weren't able to, but I guess some of the early ones did. Now, it is true, Apple bought out power computing. So, you know, maybe they allowed, you know, one last. And the, the power computing machines, for the most part, I understand, can run up to system 9.1. You just have to use Macintosh disks instead of the power computing disks. So what we have here is the system software restore disk for a power computing computer. So I got it as part of the election. It was pretty cheap. But since I have it, I have this sneaking feeling, gosh, I should try to use it. I only have one computer that could actually run Mac OS 8.0. The PowerBook 1400CS. Uh, you may remember, if you haven't seen it, I think it's kind of a fun video, the installation of Mac OS 8 on 27 floppy disks. I did that on this computer. Now, since that time, I have obtained a CD drive, which can be swapped with the uh, floppy drive that was in there. Now, it looks a little funny that CD drive does not have a faceplate on it, 
doesn't matter, works perfectly well. This computer originally came with 8.0, and I know having installed 8.0 on it, we should be good to go. Now, when I did the initial video on this, there was one thing about this computer that I kind of glossed over, maybe didn't even talk about it at all. This clear plastic cover, which is very different. You know, why isn't there a black cover? There is a Rainbow Apple logo there. Well, it's pretty cool. It comes off. Now, Apple shipped this with, uh, I think, a couple of other cover plates. One was black. Uh, there was I think, a red one. I, I don't know. Uh, but this clear one came with it. And the idea was, putting that on, you could take that off and put any kind of picture you want in there as long as it fits that particular space and it would show through the clear plastic. Kind of a clever idea. I don't know of another computer where Apple or really anybody else did this. You see people putting stickers on computers. A habit that I wish would die. Having spent quite a bit of time removing sticker residue from older computers. But, anyhow, so what, what, what I'm going to try doing is, at least at first, find out what the heck is on this disk, and then see if it will install. Now, I, part of me kind of hates to erase the 27 floppy installation. That was, that was kind of cool. It was fun to do. But I was going to put Mac OS 8.6 on it anyway. It is a much newer operating system. It uh, supports uh, Mac OS Extended as opposed to Mac OS Standard. Uh, it, I am hopeful that it may allow me to use this. This is a, an Ethernet uh, PC card. It slots in one of those two openings that the machine has. Uh, I tried putting it in. Well, no, I didn't try putting it in because the, the directions that came with the card said install the drivers first. The drivers are on a CD. Well, once I got the CD drive, I put this in. Mac OS 8.0 has no idea what to do with the drivers. Uh, now, it says drivers for Mac OS 8 and 9. 8.6, which was the last version of Mac OS 8, ought to be able to make sense out of this. And it would be awfully nice to be able to get this computer to contact the internet. So, since I'm only installing 8.6, I might as well go by way of System 8 courtesy of power computing. I know the OS installation videos haven't been the most popular that I've done, but you know, I make videos about things that interest me. I find this kind of stuff fascinating. If you do, please stay tuned. Well, here we are, booted up into the 27 floppy disk version of Mac OS 8.0. Just a quick reminder of the specs of this machine, if you can actually call them specs. Remember, this, this machine goes back to 1997. 32 megabytes of RAM. Now, you actually could go as high as 64 megabytes. Uh, it came, it shipped with, uh, I believe, 16. There's 16 megabytes on the logic board and then there are two expansion slots uh, so clearly what's happened with this we've got the one uh, the 16 megabytes that are in there and there is 16 megs probably using only one of those two uh, expansion slots if you were to put two 24 megabyte modules into those slots then you would end up with the 64 megs 
All right. And Mac OS 8.0. Close window, okay. And system profiler. A little more information here. Processor is a PowerPC 603 EV. We're only at 167 megahertz. All right. Isn't really telling us anything about the graphics. <laughs> Maybe we don't want to know. Uh, look at volume information first. And our hard disk <laughs> is a an enormous 1.3 gigabytes. Well, actually, back in the day, that seemed spacious enough. My first computer had a 512 megabyte hard drive. Uh, by the time this computer came out, one gig seemed pretty good. I had stepped beyond that. I was putting, you know, put an 80 gig drive into a machine and it just seemed absolutely enormous. Okay, uh, and device information. That's the internal hard drive. That's internal ATA. No, we're not going to find anything about graphics. Because <laughs> basically there really aren't any graphics. All right. Now, fortunately, the place where the button would be on the front panel does work. I am able to eject this drive. And we're going to put the power computing CD in. Things are slow here in 1987. Okay, and there it is. It mounted up reasonably well. Oh, the Power PC Read Me. I have no idea what's on the Power CD Read Me. Okay. The CD contains a backup of all system software, drivers, utilities, and bundled applications that have been pre-installed on your power computing computer. The CD has a uh, minimal system folder which allows you to boot from it in order to run hard disk utilities, install FWB CD-ROM toolkit, or reinstall system software. All right, now. Okay. You see that? But simple text. All right. Let's see. Power Computing Corporation bundled software. Acrobat Reader. Creative Collection. Now Software. Nisus Writer. Oh, Claris Works. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um. What the heck is now software? Read me. How about this? I'm actually reading the readme files. <laughs> Additional information on now up-to-date contact. 3.6.5 for Macintosh, February 18th, 1996. Okay. Yeah, it appears to be 
I don't know, some kind of business software? Two more web browser programs, Internet Explorer, and America Online. Ah, oh, the good old days. I was on America Online. Welcome. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, quit out of that. Isn't that interesting? Creative collection. Oh, fonts. As it says right there. Nisus writer? Read me before installing. I gotta read the readmes just because I don't know what these things are. How to activate your free Nisus writer. Huh. Now what would happen if we called this phone number they're giving here? Ha, 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 ha. Oh, dear. It'll only run for 30 days. Okay. Well, that's all right. I don't think we even want to run it. This is, this is all assuming the darn thing installs. Uh, okay. All right. Utilities from Power Computing Corporation. Desktop pictures. Ethernet card software. Which is not going to do me any good for my D-Link uh, card. Hard disk toolkit. Well, the Apple utilities. A couple of things only for specific uh, PowerPC computers. Uh, power Excuse me, power computing computers. CD extra? Addition, lots of desktop pictures, aren't there? Hypercard updates. Oh, yeah. The old days. Okay. Uh, internet extras? Oh, there's America Online. There's Internet Explorer. None of which will do us a blessed bit of good because as it is right now, this computer cannot connect to the Internet. Uh, install AOL 3.1. Install AOL 3.0. Oh, that's 3.0.1. That's for 68K Max. This is for Power PCs. This is a power PC, early power PC. All right, well. System software installers. Okay, that's the installer. All right. I'm gonna close out of all this. Yeah, so I'm going to end up installing over this no matter what. So, I don't think there's going to be any anything in this installer sniffing for the fact that this is not a power computing machine. So, let's go into control panels. Startup disk. And okay. And let's restart. Now, due to the you know antique nature of this computer. And the fact that it's on a CD drive that's probably older than the computer. I'm going to pause this right now and we will pick it up uh, when, hopefully when something happens. Well, okay, something happened, all right. I think it just booted us up back into 
the installed 27 floppy disk desktop. Uh, so I was trying to find, verify that. Usually you'd see, I mean, I don't know for sure about OS 8, but ordinarily you would see uh, a background with compact disks in place of uh, Happy Mac there. Um, so I was just trying to verify what the startup disk is. Startup device unknown. All right. Tell you what I'm going to do. Maybe this is booted off the CD. I, oops, I'm going to shut it down. Now, one of the funny things about these computers is that you couldn't start them from the CD by holding down the C key. That came later. What you can do is hold down uh, Command, Option, Shift, and Delete. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it can't boot. It can't boot. If I let go of these keys, it is probably just going to find the hard drive installation again. Well, let's see. All right, back when I know something. No, we're booting off the hard drive, all right. And one very obvious way of telling that was the CD drive was dead silent as well as I can tell silence in here right now, uh, until it actually booted up and it started mounting the CD. Well, we've got one last thing we can try here. I'll just run the installer from here. And it will either install the operating system or it's going to throw us an error. Okay, we're going to perform a clean installation. We have reached software license. All right. Top center internet access, open transport, power computing software. Java, personal web sharing, just in case. Just for the heck of it, I think I'm going to select everything there is to select. 
just to see what's on it because it's all going to end up getting overwritten by Mac OS 8.6 anyway. All right, let's see what happens. Checking laptop. The inventive name that somebody once gave to this, uh, this 1.3 gigahertz uh, Toshiba. I think I saw this at Toshiba. Okay, it hasn't stopped us yet, has it? Yeah, it looks like it's... Okay, yeah. You know, let's just go back to easy install. Why fuss with it? And clean install. I thought I already told it to do that. Tell you what, I'll take pity on you, and uh, I'll come back when something happens, good or bad. Stay tuned. Well, here we are. It says it's finished. Info Center Installer. That took, by the way, for the record, about 14 minutes. Slow CD drive and a slow computer. Uh, well, there's, there's more to install. Well, stay tuned. Well, we're over half an hour in now. I'll tell you, it just keeps going and going and going. Uh, power computing obviously bundled a lot of software. Now, exactly how much of it is trialware? And how much of it's actually usable remains hard to say. Uh, but yeah, power computing was kind of a threat to Apple, actually. They made very good computers, and they sold them for less than Apple could sell them. And that's why Jobs knew he had to end the, the clone uh, agreements. Uh, Apple was getting something like $50 for every computer that a clone maker made, but they were just getting hammered on the hardware end of it. Uh, so the, the trial that was supposed to add a new revenue flow was killing them. All right, well, I uh, just thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> obviously have further to go. It's been uh, 33 minutes so far total, right? Stay tuned. Well, the installation process has finished. Uh, now I make that about 46 minutes total. Uh, all right. So, Let's restart. Man, that that installed a lot of extra software. I'm be curious to see just how much hard disk space is left.
I don't got the same old wallpaper, but that was the default wallpaper for OS 8.0, so. Loading extensions. Okay. Well, if nothing else, at least there is still an operating system on this machine. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Saving comments in info windows. Oh, rebuilding the desktop file. Okay. So it's something you see OS 9 do <laughs> way too often. It's kind of annoying. Okay. Well, we've seen it boot up. You don't need to watch this. I'll be back. Well, this is clearly a new installation. Uh, for one thing, we see here, browse the internet, Mac OS Info Center, mail. We have the setup assistant going on here, uh, which I'm gonna need to go through. You don't need to see that, but uh, yeah. Now, what's gonna happen? I eject the disk. Nothing. Okay, so it didn't seem to mount that second time around. Uh, okay. Well, let me go through setting it up, and then, then we'll do a little bit of exploration here. Stay tuned. Okay, I've got it all set up now. Uh, let's take a bit of a look here. Whoops. About this computer, it's not going to tell us anything really different. You know, that's course exactly what it was uh, saying ahead of time uh, before I did all this all right system profiler customer care code that's new. Okay, all of this stuff is the same. Startup device is still unknown, so I guess that's not anything to do with the disk. Volume information should tell us something. Ah, yes. 1.3 gigabytes, space available 931.7 megabytes. Uh, with the 27 floppy disk install, there was, there was a gig free. So, yeah, there's more stuff that's been put on it. Not that much more, though. Okay. device information just the hard drive Toshiba hard drive total buses found expansion bay there's nothing in it oh CD-ROM drive I thought that they were talking about the, uh, the PC slots so yeah the CD-ROM ROM drive is in there is it telling us anything in particular about it? No. The SCSI bus. Uh, there's nothing on the SCSI bus. Macintosh computer. Apple Computer in Incorporated. All right.
Now it did put these different things. And I tried just for the heck of it to click on browse the internet just to see what would open. But I didn't set up the internet since this computer right now can't connect to the internet. What does Mac Info Center do though? Oh, it's going to not launch Netscape. Okay, so it's... Uh, so, yeah, Netscape then is the default browser on this system, even though Internet Explorer is there. Uh, and I would imagine that the mail link is going to launch the Claris mailer, although that won't launch either. Uh, well, it's Netscape 3, the old gold. Yeah, at this point, Netscape was just the browser. So, you know, Claris emailer was necessary to get email. Assuming you could get on the internet. All right, Power Computing Mac OS Info Center. Help me solve a problem. Show me what I can do. Help me explore the internet. Okay. Quit out of that. Hard drive. Hmm. This is kind of interesting. We have a previous system folder. System folder one. Previ another previous system folder. This doesn't make sense to me. And the active system folder. Okay, uh, you know, I think the best thing to do at this point, I have no idea uh, how long this video is going to end up being. I've been at this most of the afternoon. Uh, I'm going to put the clips together. So I think I'm going to end the video now. And if I find anything interesting, maybe I'll put an addendum up to it. Uh, but for the moment anyway, be good to other people. They all deserve it. Be good to yourselves. You particularly deserve it. Take very good and careful care. This has been Broken Electronics, and we'll be back with you real soon.